well, so I wasn't expecting to film another video today, but I was watching back on my January haul and I was not very happy with the energy that I had in that. I even when I was filming it, I knew that was a bad idea just because I had just spent the day talking to people and I'm I'm an introvert, so my energy was drained. So I was like, damn girl, you gotta <laughs> you gotta have to redo that. I was like, maybe, maybe it's something I'd be happy with. But it, it wasn't and I, I want to refilm it because I want to put out content that I would personally enjoy and that also that I'm proud of. And watching back like 10 seconds of that video, I just knew it wasn't going to be that video. So I was like, I'm going to refilm it then. So here we are. We're about to refilm it. Hi, if you're new here. Hi, my name is Melanie. If you'd like to get to know me a little better, all my social media links. A link down below. I'm slowly getting to the point of the year where I'm feeling energized to go back into doing everything. So expect content. Expect lots of content. So <laughs> yes. Anyways, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the two books which aren't from Jonathan Ball because this month, January was a month of getting, apparently. I'm super grateful for all the publishing houses that sent me books during January. Honestly, January is always like a tough month. It's either all the releases or none of the releases. So I'm quite, I'm quite excited for this, for this stack right here. There's a lot of books to get through, so we're just going to power through it as quick as possible. So the first book I have to talk to you about is How to Build a Heart by Maria Padilla. And I actually have a review for this right up on um, my blog right now. If you're interested in looking, you can already see I've read it. So proud. Be proud. Be very, very proud. This follows our main character, Izzy, who is kind of finding herself out of loop. She she doesn't know who she is, so she's very she's finding it very difficult to find her place in this new environment that she's kind of been in for a little bit, but she's feeling really out of whack because a lot of things have happened in her life that have kind of made her unsure of who she is. So we kind of just follow her adventure as she learns who she is and where her place is amongst her school friends, amongst her life and the people in her life. So I was really I really did enjoy this, but more of that in my February wrap up. Thank you so much to Alagonquin young readers that is quite a publishing name i had to actually google how to say it because i wasn't quite sure but thank you so much to algonquin young readers for this i was so surprised to find this at my door and i was so happy when i saw what it was i'm so grateful because not only is it an arc but they sent it via courier which means i got here quite quickly the next book that i got here is a book from pam mcmillan so a big shout out to them for sending this to me especially Considering what it is, it's a hard cover, which if you don't know here in South Africa, those are quite pricey because they are very high production and expensive to ship as well because, you know, they weigh a lot. So the book I have here is Contender, The Chosen, the first, well, the first book in the Contender series by Tarana Mataru. This follows our main character, Cade, and he is kind of transported to this alternate world where he is basically a contender in this game and we kind of follow his adventure as he experiences this new world and these really mysterious discoveries that he comes across. I'm really, I've read this already so I can't really say too much about spoiling it but I'm really grateful that I received a copy of this to review. We're now going to go ahead and jump into the stack of books that I got from Jonathan Ball Publishers, they are such an amazing group of people. Not only are they a publisher, but they're also an agency. And I'm super grateful that they ended up spoiling me senseless this month. Well, in January. January, that just passed. So are you, what, just like a big thank you to them. And I, I, I can't wait to jump into these and kind of uh, see how I feel. So these are in no particular audio, much the same with the other two. They, they just, as I pick them up. The first book I have here is The Foul Twins, Owen Colfer. Um, this follows the two Fowl twins, Miles and Beckett. They are the younger brothers of Artemis Fowl. Artemis Fowl has his very own series, which I personally am excited to get to. I'm really excited for this. I've heard amazing things. And honestly, I feel like this is going to be such a good read. I read one Artemis Fowl book and it's a time paradox. And I really do enjoy Owen's writing style, keeping in mind that I read that book a couple of years ago, but I'm really excited to go ahead and jump into this. Another book that I'm beyond grateful for receiving, just because it was so unexpected, and I'm, I'm, it, it gets me excited for this series, and that is The Burning White by Brent Weeks. This is the fifth and final book in the Lightbringer series. This is following, um, I don't know which characters, but I know the magic system is much like Sanderson, where there is consequences. The magic system is about um, light 
which is refracted reflected through prism so if you know um light tends to have different colors and as i mentioned this is the last box so i will be taking the time and investing in the trades for the rest of the series i know that readers warehouse has them for a really inexpensive price so i might go and check that out in the upcoming weeks and try and get book one and two as soon as possible this book is quite big it is over 900 pages long which means that the pages are like super thin but a bonus is that it's floppy so i'm really excited to jump into this another unexpected book that i wasn't quite expecting hence why i said unexpected but one that i was really not anticipating and receiving or anything like that is the queen of nothing by holly black this is the third and final book in the folk of air series if you don't know the folk of air follows two characters mainly jude and her adventures in overthrowing the fae jude is a mortal who um is taken hostage the cruel prince is quite a popular book i was really surprised to have this this gives me some motivation to actually go ahead and read the wicked king which i was actually going to be returning to my friend Abby because I don't have my own copy. However, now that I have both The Cruel Prince and The Queen of Nothing in the trade, I will now be seeking the trade for The Wicked King. Another book that I have here is As She Ascends by Jodie Meadows. This is the second book in the Fallen Isles trilogy. I have not read the first book, which is Before She Ignites, but I'm really excited because now I can binge a little. The book that I'm really excited to get was A Throne of Swans by Catherine and Elizabeth Cole. I've read the first book in their other series, but I've been hearing such amazing things about this one that I cannot wait to jump into it ASAP. It just sounds amazing and interesting. Almost, almost as if it's like the Merciful Crow in the sense of um, it has birds that kind of represent nobility and I, I guess status in some way. But beyond that, it's quite different. This book is sounding like it's going to be filled with so many twists and turns. So I'm hoping that it delivers. We then also have a book that I wasn't sure I was going to be anticipating, but once I heard what it was about, I was like, yes, please. And that is Angel Mage by Agath Nix. I have not read Sayreel and that series by him. I did try once, but I was too young to comprehend the magnificence of what that series may be. But I'm excited to, for Angel Mage. This just sounds amazing and just up my alley. <laughs> I, I've predicted it to be a five-star read for me, so hopefully it delivers in that sense. I'm keeping an open mind when I'm going to jump into this. When that will be will hopefully soon, but I'm not entirely sure just yet. And then we see this really cute little thing, which is the Gashley Crumb Tinies by Edward Gorey. I think it's how you would say it. It just, it's so funny. Um, so this is just the alphabet, but the way it is presented, I, it's just funny. So it's the name of kids. So like B is for Basil, assaulted by bears. It's just like, it has, I think it helps, it will help um, to teach phonetics because it sounds quite nice. So like A is for Amy who fell down the stairs. B is for Basil, assaulted by bears. C is for Clara who wasted away. D is for Desmond, thrown out of a sleigh. So like, it's just really grimy and i think it's gonna just be a fun little thing to read one day i'll probably be reading this for like a 24 hour readathon or when i'm in need of a really short quick easy fun read another book here that i have heard really good things about is scars like these by erin stewart this is following a young girl named ava as she goes back to school after a house fire has left a really severely disfigured and I guess it's just about her kind of adapting to what has happened to her and working her way through all of that and I'm really excited I believe it has a lot it has really good rep for mental illness I know my friend Abby from Abby the Bibliophile who I'll link down below was quite interested in this so I'm hoping to read this and then like lend it to her so she can also read it for a bit so I'm really happy I got this another book that I've gotten is A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kemmerer this book is following the events of A Curse So Dark and Lonely, but according to Bridget herself, you could technically read these first two books out of order. They obviously the f this book will pertain to some of the stuff that happened in the first book, but she said it isn't entirely necessary because this actually follows a different set of characters than the first book, and I think it's the third book that ties them all together. But I'm gonna be reading them in order. <laughs> I'm really excited for this. I've heard great things about A Curse So Dark and Lonely, and I've heard some good things about our hearts so fierce and broken. It is now a trilogy, uh, in case you didn't know that. I I always thought it was, but some people did not know, so it's a trilogy. And I'm really excited to just jump into it and see what all the hype is about, because this is quite a hype series, I'm not going to lie. Another book that I'm so excited for is Sea Witch by Sarah Henning. This book follows Ursula before the events of The Little Mermaid, and I think it's kind of when Ursula was quite young, and it kind of helps us 
get the backstory of Ursula as it leads to who she is, um, who she has become in The Little Mermaid. And I love these kinds of retellings where it kind of gives us a little bit of a backlash or a, some background on our favorite villains. And honestly, Ursula was my favorite, even though I was quite scared of her when I was a kid. I'm not going to lie, she was kind of scary. Um, but you know what? Ariel should have read that contract a bit more. I am also then very excited with The Fire on High by Elizabeth A. Speedo because this is apparently quite a heartwarming book about magic and food and just an amazing experience to read from everyone that I've heard. Some people have loved the audiobook, some people have actually just loved reading this as physical. So I'm really excited for this. A lot of these books are books that I've either heard quite a lot about in a really good way or books that I'm just like really excited to read based on my own interests in them. The next book that I have here is Stolen Time by Danielle Rowlands. Danielle Rowlands wrote something else. What it is, I cannot tell you, but I'm pretty sure she wrote some other books. Oh, I think that's not what I was expecting. She wrote Twisted Fates. You know, so this is the first book. Stolen, in Stolen Time is the first book and then Twisted Fates is the second book. I just think they were published in close succession of each other. Um, this follows two characters. Kind of reminds me a lot about Tempest by Julia C Julie Cross. If you've ever read that, trust, I love that book so much, but I was unable to find the second and the third book, which is so weird because I love that first one so much, but it is quite an old book, I will not lie. Anyways, it sounds a lot like that. The premise is quite similar. So I'm excited to see how Danielle Rollins actually approaches the subject. The next book I have is The Disasters by M.K. England. This just sounds so interesting and sounds like something that I'd really enjoy. I'm not the biggest fan of sci-fi, so I was interrupted by a phone call with my mom. Um, I don't know how to say it, like say, said my eitretrap, she, she basically shouted at me. Uh, but anyways, I'll talk about how I'm not really the biggest fan of sci-fi sometimes, but as of late, I've really been enjoying it as opposed to my usual fantasy. Obviously, they're in the same genre feel, they're both use sim similar elements but not exact same elements but I'm really excited to see how this one plays out this just sounds so interesting and the amount of blurbs it's gotten um especially from authors that I really enjoy reading their books so I'm quite I'm, I'm excited another book I have here is A User's Guide to Make Believe by Jane Alexander this just sounds so very very interesting um it's basically a fantasy system I want to say it's almost like the Matrix without having read this yet so I'm I love the Matrix I can't wait for this. We then have the sequel to Wicked Like a Wildfire and it is Fierce Like Firestorm and I'm so excited. I can now binge the series. They're both really short um, and concise books. Really, I can't wait. We then have To Drink Coffee with a Ghost by Amanda Lovelace. This is actually really a... I thought this was the journal, which I was going to be like, why do I have this? But this is actually her newest, one of her newest poetry collections. So I'm just excited to jump in and kind of see what her poetry is all about. I've never read anything by Amanda Lovelace and I've been getting into poetry a little bit these days just because I find like it's such a nice break from these really hefty, long-winded, in a good way, long-winded novels. Sometimes I like having the short, impactful literature as well. I also have a non-fiction and this, when I read it, I was just like, need, and that is Corrupt Bodies, Death and Dirty Dealings in a London Morgue by Peter Everett. I'm so excited. I'm actually, gonna, I'm planning on reading this this month in February. So I'm really excited to see how this all plays out. I'm so excited to receive a copy of Broken Things by Lauren Oliver. This just sounds amazing. I just heard really great things about Broken Things and I personally cannot wait to uh, like it's a YA thriller, so I'm really excited for it. The book I have is The Pax by Amy Heinrich. This is a local author who is literally very much local to me. And this follows a uh, prank which becomes a murder and it just sounded so good that I couldn't wait to start it. I'm quite surprised that they've only done paperback reductions of this and not trades because I would have loved to see this in trade. I'm then so very happy that Jonathan Ball also sent me a copy of Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahern. This is the beautiful paperback. I now have it in both and this is not, this is quite floppy. Um, it's not as floppy as what I expected. Like I feel like if you left it for too long you might damage the spine. But I'm really happy that I have two copies of this now. I will probably end up rereading this and then reviewing this, this particular copy and putting my little things in here just because I'm weird that way. And then the very last book I have to show you in today's haul is American Panda by Gloria Chow. I've heard great things and I'm so excited to read this content. Hopefully I can read it quite soon just because I think, you know, I think it's got good representation and I've just heard really great things about it. So I, I can't wait. And it's got mixed media. I did not know that. I am now more excited. Maybe I should pick it up this month. 
if I have time, I'll pick it up in Bib. We'll see how it all goes. I, I just, mm. So these are all the books I received in the month of January. I, like I mentioned, I am so beyond blessed to have received so many and especially an amazing thank you to Jonathan Ball who did Beyond Spoiling. I'm so excited for all of these titles to just jump in, get going, get reading. I'm really happy that I'm starting to read a lot more of my recents and a lot more of my older books at the same time because that needs to happen and slowly but surely we'll meet in the middle <laughs> and I'm hoping that it stays that way. But yes, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you have read any of these books or you would like to read any of these books or if you have any thoughts on the books that I've mentioned in today's video, please let me know down below in the comment section. I would love to have a conversation about these books with you just because I think that this is what the community is about. It's about conversations and I'm so excited to start one with you. So I'll see you in the next video.